Kendra Little. The other day I was drawing a diagram of a non-clustered index and an interesting question occurred to me. The non-clustered index that I drew looked something like this. There's a root page, there's intermediate pages, and there's what's called the leaf level of the non-clustered index. And I was drawing the diagram to show that when you define a non-clustered index, you can choose to use both key and included columns in the non-clustered index. Included columns are optional, but the way that the non-clustered index is stored, the key columns will be used to determine the order of the pages in the index. And the key columns are in the root and intermediate pages of your index. If you have intermediate pages, the leaf level of the index, this largest uh, part of the index will have those key columns and the keys will determine the order of those pages. If you choose to use included columns in your non-clustered index, they are literally included in the leaf level only of the index and they're there to be available for your queries so that your queries can get to those columns without having to go access a different structure like the base table um, or potentially another index. So that's what included columns are. The, question that I came up with for non-clustered indexes was, wait, what about a really small table? Let's say I have a really small table and the data could actually all fit on one page, but I, I had a non-clustered index and I had key columns and included columns. Is it smart enough to put that all on one page? And if so, wh what level is that page at? Or even for a tiny non-clustered index, if I define included columns, is it always a root page and then at least one leaf page? You know, does it isolate those key columns from the included columns or not? And I thought to myself, I thought, well, wow, I really want to know. And I should just test it to find out. One of the great things about SQL Server is it gives us tools that we can do things like check and say, hey, exactly how many pages are allocated to this index. So we're going to build a really small non-clustered index with included columns and we're going to take a look. All right, let's get to our test. We've got Management Studio open here and I am in a user database. In my case, it's called SQL Index Workbook. Doesn't really matter. The first thing I'm going to do is just create an empty table named dbo.pagetest because what I'm going to do is count the pages and look at what level it assigns to those pages. I'm gonna put in just a few rows. Now, one page can hold 8K worth of data. And I've just got four rows here, really narrow values on them. So they should all fit on one 8K page if SQL Server is smart enough to do that. This is currently a heap. I didn't define a clustered index on my table. So I can leave it that way. I, I am curious in my case about a non-clustered index. So I am going to create an index. I've just used the syntax create index here. Unless I specifically say otherwise, this will create a non-clustered index on the table. I am putting two columns into the key of my non-clustered index, first name, and first name by birth date ID. And the gender column is going into the includes of my non-clustered index. So let's see, was it smart enough to fit that all on one page or did the simple fact that I have an included column mean that I have to have at least two? To test this, I'm gonna use an undocumented dynamic management view called SysDMDB database page allocations. And it does exactly what it says. It says, I'm going to look at what pages have been allocated for tables. This dynamic management view was added in SQL Server 2012. Prior to that, you had to use a command called dbcc end to do these things. And I really like this one better. I'm glad Microsoft added it, even though it's technically undocumented, because I can do things like say, I want to put a where clause on here. I only want pages that are allocated. I want them for index ID two. This is a new table and I created a non-clustered index on it. It will never get index ID equals one because that's only for clustered indexes. So it should get index ID equals two since it's the first uh, non-clustered index created on it. 
and I don't want to know about allocation map pages. I only want to know about pages that are actually part of the index. This part of the query up here is where I tell it I want to look in the current database, I want to look at the page test object ID, and I want you to run in detailed mode and actually give me all of the pages, not just a sampling. So I run this and I actually get just really fast and easy. Here are my answers. Yes, SQL Server is smart enough to fit this all on one page and it identifies that page as page level zero. In other words, I only have a uh, leaf page in this non-clustered index. It, it has everything on it and it doesn't feel the need to add an extra root page. It is smarter than that. Now let's take a look and make sure everything I told you is true. Let's go ahead and let's add more rows to our table. I'm going to go ahead and do kind of a hacky shortcut here and I'm inserting rows with the, and here's the hacky part. I told it to run this batch for, or run this batch 100 times. So it inserted 400 rows into the index. Now that I have these rows, okay, well how many pages do I have allocated for this now? Well, now I have three pages allocated for my non-clustered index. Two of them are leaf level, in other words, level zero, and one of them is now level one. I have a root page that just has those keys on it. So the gender column, that included column, is tacked on to these two pages that are in the leaf of my index now. So what we showed here is that for non-clustered indexes, for really small tables where everything can fit on one page, SQL Server is smart enough to do that even if you've got included columns in the non-clustered index. Thanks for joining me.